Hey everyone, welcome to the GRE how-to series where we make studying for the GRE a lot more tolerable. I have just taken the GRE for the third and final time. And I'm here to let you know how I did. Welcome to the GRE how-to series. I am so glad that you have really come to follow me on this journey. It is definitely pretty crazy that about a year ago I started documenting my journey and studying for the GRE and we have come to this point in time this evening to kind of just celebrate being done. I decided to chronicle this journey because I did not know if I could get a premium or elite GRE score. And if I didn't get it, then I wanted to make sure that I could at least share what I've learned to try to help somebody else get their target score. So that's really why I started my YouTube series and it's really grown from there. You know, now I want to continue the conversation and talk about things that I am really passionate about, which is God goals and grad school. So I'm gonna keep on doing this. Even though I'm done taking the GRE, I still definitely plan on sharing some lessons that would be helpful for studying for the GRE. And I really do think that if we can, actually start figuring out a point to studying for the GRE beyond just getting a high score. I think my hypothesis, because I am trying to be a scientist, <laughs> is that we can actually improve our score and make the journey for studying for the GRE more useful past test day. So, I will definitely keep on making GRE videos, maybe not at the same frequency, but if there is something that you want to see, let me know and then I will find a way to make it happen. I really wanna keep on growing this community. You all are interested in grad school, presumably, so you will hopefully find my content on grad school, like my episode of post-grad, which you can click up here and you know, just learn from people who are using either graduate school as a, a means to achieve their dreams or using their own personal resources, grit, and things like that to achieve your goals. I don't want people to walk away from my channel thinking that the only way to achieve your goals is through graduate school. And that's why I will be spending time interviewing entrepreneurs who didn't even go to college, who have been able to grow multi-million dollar businesses, and people who just really found ways to make things happen and didn't really let their circumstances determine what their destination would be. So. I hope you're excited or as excited as I am to see that kind of content. And if you have any suggestions for people that I should interview or talk to, let me know. I am very, very much interested. Without further ado, I am going to share a little bit about this final test experience. And a question I get a lot is, Ashley, your score was already good the first time. Why in the world are you taking this again? And the answer is, you know, the quintessential good score is really relative to your goals and the programs that you're applying to. So I, my first time, scored in the 45th percentile in the quantitative portion. And I just knew that that just wasn't going to cut it. I actually want to do quantitative research. And even though the GRE is not the premier indicator that, you know, foretells my ability to do the quantitative research, there are definitely some people who like to see a very, very, very high score to just make them feel comfortable. So I wanted to make sure that that my quant score wasn't going to keep me from getting the opportunities that I'm reaching for. So for me and my goals, it was important for me to try again. For you and your goals, 
that might not be the case. So I just want to make sure that you are keeping that in mind. I don't believe that the only way or the only good score is over a 320 because it's not. There are people who can only need to get a 290 in order to get into the programs that they want to get into. So I want to make sure that this is a really accessible information to anyone. And if you are looking to get that elite 320 plus score, by all means, you know what? This content is going to help you as well. And as promised, it's going to make studying for the GRE a lot more tolerable too. So you're welcome. I decided to take the GRE for the third and final time because I really felt that I could at least get a little bit higher. Uh, if you followed my journey from the very beginning, I started off as very, very average when it comes to where, where I was testing. So when it came to my performance my first time, it came up with the 45th percentile, which means below average. And I, I just knew that it just wasn't going to be in my favor to turn that into the elite programs that I'm aiming for. So I decided that I was just going to take uh, another year and study for it and let that be that. <laughs> the only complication was that I started a full-time job. Not only did I start a full-time job, I also am a little bit of an achiever. Like I can't not achieve. So I definitely burnt the candle at both ends. And you know what? That is, that's just my reality. That's my circumstance. I don't have the ability to not work. <laughs> and the, the time that I did spend not working, I did use toward trying to get a great score. This, there were a lot more demands on my time and it made it a lot more difficult. So in the past, I've said that, hey, you only need two months to study for the GRE. I would like to formally amend that statement <laughs> because I truly believe that there, you only need two months if you could dedicate, you know, three to four hours a day studying for those two months and taking enough practice tests and, you know, really using that time to digest and understand your performance. But if you have a life, a partner, kids, a job, it just starts adding some complexity <laughs> that might require you to have a little bit more time. So that said, I still tried to study. I still worked full time. And my second time, the good news is, and if you haven't seen that video, click up here to hear my round two recap, is that I raised my quant score, which is great. The not so great news is that I raised my quant score to be just slightly <laughs> above average. And I just, I just believed that I could do it a little bit more. But the complication is that now time is running out. I think that, you know, taking the GRE post-graduation, you know, more than three times is kind of insane. And it's only partially insane that I started this journey in the first place. So I didn't want to like up the level of insanity. So I just really, I just said, hey, the soonest I can take this test again is 21 days. I'm going to schedule this test a month from which was the day that I took the test. Now, I said this before in the last video, I actually don't recommend a month. I mean, I think that I was able to make the best out of the month. And I, you know what, I actually go back and forth. If I had two or three months, would I have studied as intensely? Would I have let other priorities, you know, take away my time? Would I have, um, actually made use of that time to get even higher scores. I'm not sure and I'll never find out, but I do think that if you can, two months, like two extra months would be ideal. I think one month is quite 
short. <laughs> so let that be my statement. If you must retake the test, give yourself six to eight more weeks. If you need to retake the test and let's say you need to improve your quant score by 10 points, 12 points, two months is not enough time. A lot of people underestimate how much time it takes to raise the score. So I don't want you to feel like you could cram your way into raising your score, you know, 10 plus points in three weeks. I do not think it's possible. And I do not think your well-being would be at a great state. How do I say that? I just don't think life would be great <laughs> if that, no. What I'm trying to say is I think you're setting yourself up for unrealistic expectations. Who knows? Some people can do it. I know I couldn't and I didn't. So now I'm gonna talk about a little bit of my test day ritual. I actually took this at a different location than my normal location that I took it the last two times. So I wanted to make sure that I at least knew where it was. So a couple of days before over the weekend, I drove over there. It was unfortunately locked. So I wasn't able to get a sense of where the bathroom was, but I highly recommend that you find that out. You need to know where the bathroom is, how long the walk is to get there, if you need a key to get into the bathroom, because man, I when I was doing the GMAT way back when, I I have been tripped up on some of that timing. So you just wanna get a sense of, you know, your surroundings. I think that's really important. So day of, I decided I was going to take the test at 12.30 p.m. because I like that time. I feel like I'm wide awake and alert. So what I did was I ended up getting a really great breakfast at one of my favorite restaurants. It was like a bacon avocado omelet with a biscuit and a salad instead of potatoes. Cause I'm trying to like, I think carbs can kind of mess with your sugar levels, which you don't want to mess with because you know, you don't want to get tired or you don't want to crash. And plus I like my Starbucks. So I like to make sure that I get that sugar in. Anyway, that is <laughs> what I had. I also had a mimosa. <laughs> I was just like, let's celebrate. I, I do remember the last time I took it the GMAT, I had a mimosa and I actually did better. So <laughs> I had one and it was great. I really enjoyed it. And um, for good measure, I also like walked by a juice store and had a turmeric shot. I don't know. It's, it's all the rage at the moment. So that's what I did. Yeah, by the way, if you do not care about what I ate or what I did, you know, feel free to use the timestamps below. I, I gift that to you because, you know, some of you might not care. So what I ended up doing was last time when I took the test, it was so crowded and it took such a long time. So I, I wanted to get there earlier, but I actually didn't end up doing, getting there as early as I wanted to because I stopped at the grocery store to get some snacks. Since it wasn't my normal testing center, I had to go to a different location for my snacks. And so that added time. I ended up getting energy balls, which is my usual snacks. And just in case I got hungry, since I didn't have time to get lunch before my test time, I got some almonds and a cheese and grapes. So I wanted to make sure that I would be properly satiated because magic does not happen when you're hungry, especially on test day. But by the time I got to the testing center, everything was like clockwork. I knew, you know, how to empty my pockets. I made sure I take off my necklace um, before I went in. I, you know, went through the motions and all the security stuff and I was pretty, pretty set. I did feel some emotion and a little bit of anxiety, but I actually borrowed a little tip that I got from Marie Forleo and reading everything is figure outable and kind of used the word shushi to attribute to my to my nervousness. So I like even in the car, I was like, I'm feeling shushi. It actually works like it's just silly. And it's fun. And it just kind of rescribes the energy that you're kind of feeling and kind of makes it a little silly. So thanks, Marie. I really appreciate it. It actually worked for me. So that was great. After the essays, which I don't feel, 
I don't really feel a lot of anxiety with essays. I just do them, which that might not be the case for everyone. And I understand. Um, but wherever you feel the most calm in the jeery landscape of time, just try to take advantage of that. So the way I took advantage of that is that when I had extra time in the essay, I started writing down some things that I hope I remembered when the quantitative section happens. I ended up writing all the prime numbers under 100. I ended up trying to jot down some of the uh, formulas I hope I remembered. And I ended up writing down the five keywords that I hoped I remembered on test day. And if you haven't seen that video, click up here and I outline the five things that I hope I remembered on test day and the kinds of concepts that went with it. So with square dance, I actually ended up writing the difference of squares formula and it actually helped a lot. So I, I wanted to do like 10 things I hope I remembered, but I think five was perfect because I actually remembered them. So pro tip, I think it actually would be good for you if you make your own list of five to seven things that you hope you remember on test day, because it could actually come in handy. I know for me, some of them actually did. My test comprised of three quant sections and two verbal sections, which means one of my quant sections was a research portion. And you know, that's okay, because at least in this time, I knew that I needed to focus on doing well on the first section. I think that it's actually pretty nice that the GRE is currently adaptive by section. So you actually kind of have a, I don't know if it's a false sense of comfort, but some kind of solace in knowing that these are the sets of questions. There are some easy ones, there are some hard ones, there are some medium ones, do the best you can. And then based on that performance, then your next section will be either about the same a little bit easier or harder. And you know what? It doesn't really matter. Take the question one question at a time. And that's what I did. And, and this is something that I think would be helpful for everyone. Don't leave anything blank. <laughs> don't leave anything blank. That is not the greatest. <laughs> the verbal, I just really wasn't worried about it. My primary focus was to increase my quant score. And even though the last time I took the test, my verbal score went down, it was still above my 160 goal. So I didn't, I just really thought that this was going to be an energy management play for me. So if I lost a few points in verbal, I still felt okay. So I just made sure to focus my energy on quant. And I'm happy to say, uh, drum roll, please. It paid off. It paid off. I ended up scoring a 157 in quant. And even though I didn't meet my 160 goal, look, I have to give myself credit for the growth that I have displayed throughout this entire journey. Can I, give, can I tell you a secret? The first time I took the GMAT, I <laughs> literally scored in the fourth percentile of math. Four, <laughs> which means out of 100 people, 96 people did better than me. That is where I started. And now I am, I think I just looked at my score and a 157th is in the 64th percentile. The 64th, four to 64. Uh, and you know what? I, I'm proud of that. You know, because I think that, you know, if I had more time and used more resources in order to do this test, then that means that I could have met my goal. And I think that that I only need to take it again to feel like I could do it. I know I can do it. I'm just not going to. <laughs> so, I mean, that's where I stand. I hope this could be helpful for you that even if you are OK, so there's this like there's this corny adage and I know that it's actually not like astrologically correct, but go with me here. They say, if you shoot for the moon and you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. 
And apparently like stars are farther than the moon, but whatever. If you just kind of take it for what it is, it just means that if you set your goals high and you don't make it, you're gonna get somewhere, I think, further than if you set your goals for mediocrity. So I, I, I fully, fully believe in setting high bars for yourself because if you don't make it, then that's fine. Like the world is not going to end because I did not get a 160 in my, my math portion. The fact of the matter is my overall GRE score is very high especially relative to the general population. And I am thankful for that. I know there are some of you that are aiming for the perfect 340. I'm not. Um, I have bills <laughs> to pay. I have a husband to keep. I, I have insert here and that's okay. That's my story. That doesn't mean that I'm less committed to my goals. That doesn't mean that I will be a worse researcher. That doesn't mean that I can't be successful in a doctoral program. But what it does mean is that I'm going to have to work really hard to make sure that my application is tight and undeniable because you know what? I think that there's going to be a lot of people who are applying to the programs I'm applying to with much higher scores than me. And that is okay. It could mean that they're smarter than me. It definitely means that they're better at taking the test than I am, but it doesn't mean that they're better than me. And it doesn't mean that I can't be successful in a doctoral program. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully you feel encouraged. I hope that this is something that could be really valuable to you as you are working on your journey. And, you know, let me know, you know, if it's not helpful, I want to know, give me a thumbs down. If it is helpful, I want to know, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below. And as always, thank you so much for following me on this journey. I am so excited for the growing brilliant AF crew. And I'm so deeply, deeply thankful for all of your support. I have a question for you. What are some of your goals that you're working toward? Let me know in the comments below and expect a response from me. Until next time, stay brilliant and keep going.